sorry for the interruption. Uh, yeah, so after that, I kind of uh, was drifting around for a while. I didn't, uh, I didn't stay with that job any longer. I left that job, and I, I got a job in uh, in a big discount store in Coney Island. Uh, I actually turned out to be a, uh, I became a manager. So uh, that was pretty interesting also. And there I met my, uh, my second wife, who actually worked across the street in the supermarket. And her uh, ex-husband's family owned that supermarket. So uh, we started dating and whatnot. And then eventually we got married. And uh, we... Uh, you know, started our life together. We also, I didn't have any children together with her. Um, she was uh, from uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, you know, nice, nice woman, nice girl. Um, her family was pretty big. She had a big family. She had 10 brothers and sisters. Uh, a lot of them uh, were still in Puerto Rico. Uh, I think her father, her father had a, uh, a dairy farm in Puerto Rico. So they, you know, they were pretty nice. I met the family and everything, and they were nice to me. We had a good relationship. Um, so then I started to, uh, after that, I was working there for several years uh, as a manager, and I was making good money and everything. And uh, we were living in Queens, New York at the time, in Elmhurst, New York. And we uh, stayed together for, I think, about 30 years, actually. Actually, I, I had divorced her once, and I remarried her. So that's why I said I had been married four times. I count her as, you know, two times. So um, anyway, yeah, so uh, I was working there in the store, and... Uh, I was doing okay, and then I decided uh, I wanted to change and needed a change, and I got a job working for an, another company uh, that was actually a courier company, similar to FedEx. So what happened was, <laughs> I worked there for a while, and that was also like contract work, and I made good money, and everything was fine. You know, it was, I always found jobs, so I, I didn't think it was difficult to find a job. Uh, it's just if you were willing to work hard, you know, you would succeed. Uh, not like today. Today, everybody kind of like this Generation Z. Gen Zs don't want to work. Uh, I didn't. I didn't feel it was out of necessity. I mean, I wasn't trying to accomplish a, a huge amount of wealth or anything. And, you know, you had to survive basically. You had to pay rent. You had to pay food. And, you know, your basic necessities. And I didn't find it difficult to uh, to do that at all. Um, then I decided uh, I wanted to go to school, but uh, I needed to, to raise some money. So I came across somebody who uh, asked me if I wanted to work at night. So I said, well, this might be an opportunity. So I can work at night and go to school during the day. And I would, I had saved some money for school. So I decided, okay, I'll do that. So actually I went to the uh, Gemological Institute of America, which is uh, in Manhattan, in the, in the Diamond District, actually. I wanted to study uh, gemology. Uh, I thought that would be a good field to get into at the time. Um, oh, wait, before, before I did that, I did go to the Academy of Aeronautics for one year. Before that, right before that, I went to the Academy of Aeronautics. I didn't like the Academy of Aeronautics. I wanted to be, uh, my cousin was the one who introduced me to, uh, to go to the Academy to, uh, for airplane mechanic. Uh, and, uh, at the time I thought, okay, let me try that. But I didn't like that at all. It was a lot of mathematics involved, and I wasn't great in math. Uh, 
so I decided no, that wasn't going to be for me. So then I decided to go to school to the GI, what they call GIA, Gemological Institute of America. So I did uh, go to the GIA, and what I did was I needed a job so I can, you know, maintain myself. So I got introduced to somebody who worked actually for the Church of Scientology. So I said, okay, well, I'm not, gonna, I'm not a member of the church. I'm not going to become a member of the church. I'm just going to do what they asked me to do. So they basically needed me to uh, send to Europe uh, L. Ron Hubbard's uh, books on the Air India flight every night going to the UK. So I said, okay, that's fine. You know, they agreed you know, on how much they were going to pay me and everything. And I said, yeah, sure, I have no problem. Uh, the person actually that hired me was a member of the Church of Scientology, but I really didn't, you know, didn't interest me in any of that. So I did that, and that actually got me through school. Uh, my dad, actually, before I went to the school, because the uh, school is a very, very expensive school. I'm talking about in the early, God, it was like in the early, uh, late 70s, actually. It was the late 70s. This one semester was like over $3,000. It was a lot of money. And I was working and I saved the money, but I didn't, you know. So my father at that time, he said, oh, okay, so you want to go to school? Fine. Um, if you have the money, you lay it out, then I'll give, it, I'll give it back to you. And I said, oh, okay, well, all right. That's what my dad said. And so fine, I'll do it. So, uh, but he never paid me back. So, he never gave me the money back, so I just had to deal with that. Uh, and so I finished uh, the school, and while I was going to school, I had, there were a lot of uh, kids from uh, other countries that also attended, because it was, it was a world-renowned school for gemology. There weren't a lot of uh, other schools, you know, that taught that. I think there was one other school in California, but this was the, the top top school for gemology. So I actually met a uh, Saudi. Uh, his name was uh, Adele. His name I believe, was Bakash, and uh, he didn't speak English very well. So it was really really funny. <laughs> he. He didn't speak English, but he was going to an American school. So this kid was, I found out, was so wealthy. He had an apartment on the Central Park South that he was renting. His family rented for him. He would take out the whole class for lunch and dinner, like almost every day. That's how wealthy this kid was. And uh, he actually, when we graduated... He actually hired the teacher to work for him, and he opened him a, uh, a, a factory here in the U.S. in the Diamond District to manufacture jewelry for him, and the family themselves, they had a huge uh, uh, business, they had many, many different businesses. They owned uh, banks, they owned hotels, they uh, jewelry stores in Saudi Arabia. And uh, we got very, I helped him. I used to stay up at night with him to help him study, like sometimes one, two o'clock in the morning. So he was very, very appreciative. He actually, uh, at that time, he had some friends from the United Arab Emirates that was studying in California, uh, engineering, electrical engineering. And uh, at that time, when I was working for uh, Church of Scientology, they were, uh, <laughs> he was, I, I had said that, listen, FedEx was not international at that time. They are only domestic. So I had spoken to my friend and told him, wow, I had this really good idea. You know, if we can do this internationally, courier business, that would be really, really great. I think the only other company it was starting up was uh, DHL, which uh, is also worldwide. There was actually three college friends that used to run uh, canceled checks from Mexico because they used to go through clearing houses to checks. They used to run from Mexico to the U.S. through the clearing houses, the uh, checks. So um, I had mentioned this to him and he said, oh, okay. And uh, 
he had a friend that came by. Uh, it was actually Mohammed Mingalab from uh, United Arab Emirates and his brother together, both of them were studying electrical engineering in California. And uh, he was going to fly in and, you know, see his friend Adele from Saudi Arabia. So I'm not going to make this too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video and I will continue and tell you what happened. And it's pretty interesting what happened. So I think you should stay tuned and, and you'll, be, you'll be surprised what happened. See you soon. Bye.